Hi, I'm Emily, and today we're going to talk about some point-and-shoot film cameras. So if you're like me and you either love to travel or you just always like to have a camera on hand to just capture everyday memories, point-and-shoot film cameras are definitely a great option because they're so small and compact and, you know, the iPhone can only do so much. There's just something that hits a little bit different about a film photo. So I'm going to show you three that I've been using over the past couple months. We're going to do some comparisons of, of the photos. I'm going to show you all the specs and the prices and everything. And before we get started, I just want to say, I know that a lot of influencers use like the Contax T2 or T3, and those are very pricey. So I'm going to show you some lower end options. And I think, you know, it's great to buy that if you have the funds and if you know that you're going to use it all the time. But if you're getting, you know, just getting into film photography, um, I think you know, there's nothing wrong with shooting with the lower end. And honestly, they kind of look a little bit cooler and less like digital. So anyway, that's my little spiel about that. Let's get started. Okay, so the first camera we're going to talk about is the Polaroid 3000 AF. This is a great little beginner camera. It is about $20 and it's pretty cool. Honestly, it would be a great option if you've been getting into doing disposable cameras or you just really like the look of that. Um, it might be even a little bit more cost effective. That way you don't have to keep buying... Um, disposable cameras over and over again. You do have to buy the film, but you could just get like something cheap like the um, Fujifilm Superior 400 and I think that would be a great option. So to turn it on, you just click this little button here and this is to turn it off. It has a flash control on the front. The coolest thing I think about this camera is that it has a panoramic mode, which at the beginning when I first got it, I was like, you know what, that's kind of gimmicky. I'm never going to use that, but I tried it out and I actually think it's really cool. So um, definitely something to keep in mind if you like the look of the panoramic photos. Honestly, I wasn't able to find a ton of information about it on the internet, so I don't know the aperture or anything. Um, but it seems to be like a 35 millimeter lens, maybe like a 5.6 aperture. I'm totally guessing about that. The con of this is listen. Hold on, let me get it. She's loud. She's very loud. And if you're like wanting to do street photography or something, I don't know that this would be the best option for you. But if you're just drawing your friends, they won't mind. So that's this one. We're going to compare them a little more, more later, but that's just kind of a basic overview. Then the second option is just so darn cute. It's the Olympus LT1. This is the green version. It comes in green, black, and brown. And it's from the mid 90s and it has a 35 millimeter one point, or sorry, 35 millimeter 3.5 lens and it comes with this little flap which kind of acts as its own case so that is it's kind of a pro and a con because it's really protective um you can just throw it in your bag take it anywhere with you but you do have to take it off every time you want to take a photo which could be annoying and then another thing is if your you know little flap is a little bit more curved it could potentially get in the field of the lens without you noticing because the viewfinder doesn't actually see through the lens you know what I'm saying? So I just always am in the habit of just tucking it behind when I'm taking a photo. The lens is really similar to the Olympus Stylus Mu1. I actually bought that camera and it came, um, it was, it just didn't work. Okay. The, the film went in advance and I tried to take it apart and just roll the clip, just roll the clip. Here's the back so you can see this little snap closure. I really like this camera. I'm just going to come out right out and say that. It's just super, it's super reliable. Um, the aperture isn't as low as I would typically like, but I do think that helps with the focusing of the camera since the aperture is a little bit higher. And then the last camera I unfortunately don't have with me. I borrowed it from a friend, but it's the Canon AF 35 ML, which I think is also referred to as the auto boy. It might be a little bit of a different model, but very similar. And that camera is from the mid eighties and it has a 40 millimeter 1.9 lens. So the aperture is definitely a little bit lower on that camera, but it has a little bit of more trouble focusing. And it retails for about $100, so it's a little bit cheaper than the LT1, but not by much. It's also quite a bit larger than the other cameras, and it has this really finicky dial that you have to turn to turn it on. It is very loud. <laughs> I mean, it's on par with this one as how loud it is. Also, it has no manual flash, or sorry, also it has no automatic flash. So you have to turn on the flash every time you want to use it. And honestly, I would forget that. I just would. 
Okay, we're about to review the photos. I did some where I took the same photo with each camera, so we'll do a comparison of those. I also wanted to show you some of my favorites that I took with each camera, that way you can kind of see the potential that each of them have. One more thing before we get started, I developed all of these at home by myself, so they're not perfect, and I know that's not very scientific for the comparison part of this video, um, but I think you can tell, you know, which one is in focus or the colors are right or whatever, so. Okay, let's do it. So first we have this photo of some flowers and I specifically chose this shot because there's a lot going on so I wanted to see what the cameras would focus on. The Olympus did a really good job about getting everything in focus and I think the colors also look really nice. Again, this is my developing mistake where half of it is a little bit lighter than the other half, but overall I think it did a really good job. And then the Polaroid surprised me. It focused really well. And the only thing I would change about it is that the fill flash went off, so the colors are a little bit more muted than I would like. The Canon, it's out of focus. So it focused on the tree behind the flowers and not on the actual flowers. The next few photos are some portraits that I took in different lighting, so shout out to my brother for posing for me. This first shot is in direct sunlight, and as you can see, the highlights in almost all of them are pretty blown out. Um, considering how harsh the lighting was, I do think that the Olympus and the Polaroid did a pretty good job about keeping all the detail as much as possible. The Olympus has a little bit more of a bokeh effect. I know it's hard to see because of my developing mistake, but you can kind of see that the trees in the background aren't really in focus. The focus is mostly on him. However, the Polaroid, everything seems to be in focus. So if you like more of that bokeh effect, I think the Olympus is a better choice. And then the Canon, again, it's out of focus. Uh, it kind of looks cool though, I would say, but yeah, definitely focusing on the tree and not on the person. I know I said earlier that I thought the Polaroid was probably a 35 millimeter, but I'm actually thinking that it's a wider angle now. Anyway, we are in the shade now, and as far as the lighting goes, the fill flash went off on both the Olympus and the Polaroid, so I turned it on on the Canon just so we would have a more even playing field. The Olympus seems to be the most in focus. You can see his face is pretty much in focus, and the tree is more out of focus in the polaroid his face is a little bit out of focus and then in the canon again it's out of focus i think they all did a pretty good job nothing looks too dark or too bright so i think that is good of course the olympus looks a little bright on the left side just because it's underdeveloped but what can you do okay now we are in the shade and we're backlit so I wanted to see how they would perform with backlighting, but it was really too bright outside to just go straight full force shooting into the sun. So I put him in front of a tree, and as you can see, none of them are really in focus. The flash did go off on the Polaroid and the Olympus, so I turned it on on the Canon. There is more of a disparity in the lighting in the Polaroid, so the background is a lot darker than the foreground. It looks a little more cohesive in the Olympus one, and I actually like the lighting the most in the canon but again it's out of focus i also wanted to show you this photo from the olympus it is backlit and in focus and if you're someone like me that likes to shoot backlit quite a bit i think that's something to consider now we have some photos from the polaroid 3000 and this camera is surprisingly really good so on the left we have a photo that was taken when it was really overcast and the lighting is not too dark i think it looks pretty good and it's mostly in focus not tack sharp but I mean, for $20, I'll take it. And then also this photo in the middle, it could potentially have been really bad lighting because there's shade and pretty bright sun, but I think it actually turned out really well. Nothing looks too dark, nothing looks too bright, and it is in focus. Then there's this picture of my dog that I took in the middle of the day, and the lighting doesn't look too harsh. She is a little bit blown out, but she has a really light fur, so that is to be expected. And she's for the most part in focus. I think the grass is a little bit more in focus than her, but overall I think it looks pretty good. As promised, here are some of the panoramic photos I took with the Polaroid 3000. The vignetting is pretty significant on this, but I actually think it looks really cool, especially the one with the palm trees. By the way, if you want to see more of my film photos, you can follow me on Instagram at emilyeverywhere underscore. But here are some photos that I took with the Olympus LT1. And again, I'm still learning how to develop my film, so this also didn't turn out perfectly. But if we can look past that, I think the overall performance of the camera is really good. In the rainbow photo, you can see all the colors in the rainbow. And nothing looks too, too dark. It was pretty dark outside, so I'm pretty impressed with that. And then in the middle photo, it's backlit. Everything's in focus. 
The one on the right was taken when it was overcast, and I thought it would come out more gloomy looking than it did, but I actually think it's still pretty vibrant and looks good. I just think this is overall a really reliable camera. Last we have the Canon AF 35ML, and my main problem with this camera is that it rarely focuses, so I was kind of surprised to see that the photo on the left turned out so sharp. Also, the colors look really great there, but the photo in the middle I took on an overcast day, and once again, it's out of focus, and the lighting is very blue. And then the photo on the right, I took inside, it's out of focus, and the lighting is still pretty blue. I wouldn't really mind that, except for the fact that it's out of focus. So the final verdict is difficult because I think they each have a lot of potential, and each of them could be really well suited for different people. My top one would be the LT1, just because it fits my needs the most. It's really portable, um, it shoots really accurately. The Polaroid one I think would be great if you're just starting out and then the um, Canon AF 35ML is great if you want a low aperture and maybe you're wanting to shoot some portraits or more like planned out shoots rather than just keeping your camera with you all the time. So that's my final thoughts. If you have any cameras that you love, put them down below, share the love. Um, I would love to hear it and I'm sure everyone watching would like to hear it as well. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. I know I was doing a lot of research when I was trying to find out which camera I wanted. So anyway, hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. I can't, I never can end a video. Okay, bye.